Hey people of VC, it's Addy, Caddy and Milder. Got a, another seven records that are making their way from the uh, inbox down here to the shelves over there. Um, another mixed bag of uh, old and, uh, and new. Um, let's jump straight in. First up, uh, this album I've had quite a while. I had it on CD um, and what I'd listened to the CD a few times, it didn't really click, so I actually took it off my uh, vinyl want list. But I, I saw it for a really cheap price, so picked it up uh, secondhand, uh, but still pretty much in, in mint condition. I'm playing it uh, the last week. I have played it over and over again. It's really just clicked with me. Now, if you don't know uh, who Metal Allegiance are, they're, they're kind of a, a super group, really. The spine of the the band is Alex Skolnick of Testament, Mike, Mike Portnoy of uh, Dream Theatre and uh, Dave Ellefson of Megadeth. And they have additional musicians playing um, and uh, vocalists. Uh, every song on here is a double album and there are, what, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, ten tracks on, on here, uh, one of which is uh, an instrumental. And there's a different vocalist uh, or combination of vocalists on each one. You may recognise some of them here. Do a quick uh, flyby. Uh, very nice uh, gatefold. The um, I say it's a double album, so all the labels are uh, the same. So I'm not going to go and show all of those. But uh, let me tell you about who's who's on here, because it's a real kind of who's who of um, uh, of metal. So um, the inner sleeve and lyrics is on this really nice glossy. Um, I guess gatefold uh, inner sleeve Gift of Pain the first song uh, has the singer from Lamb of God uh, Randall Blythe uh, and Gary Holt plays lead guitar on there uh, Exodus uh, and Slayer uh, Let, Let Darkness Fall um, Troy Sanders is the vocal he's the guy from uh, Mastodon um, a Dying Song now this is my favourite song on the album Dying Song and it's a Phil um, Phil Anselmo is um, is the singer on it, and uh, I I'm not the, a big Pantera fan at all, and that uh, really surprised me how much I enjoyed that song. And then we have Can't Kill the Devil, which is uh, Chuck Billy on vocals, and it just sounds like a Testament song, which is hardly surprising with Skolnick and and, and Billy on it, but it also has and Andreas Kisser playing guitar on that as well from Sepultura. Scars has uh, Christina Scabia and Mark Ozegueda. Um Scabia, I didn't know who she was, but apparently she's from Lacuna Coil, and uh, Ozegueda is from um, uh, Death Angel, uh, of course. Uh, Destination Nowhere has um, Matthew Heafy. Um, I believe he's from Trivium. Uh, not familiar with him at all, though, really. Uh, Wait Until Tomorrow has uh, Doug Pinnock, he's, um, he was a guy from King's X, I think, and Jamie Jaster from Hatebreed, I, I had to look that one up, I, I don't know Hatebreed at all. Uh, there's a great um, uh, instrumental called Triangulum, uh, Pledge of Allegiance, the officially the last track on the, the album, uh, has a real um, mix, uh, Marcos Aguada does the uh, the vocals, but it also has additional lead guitar from um, Charlie Benante of uh, Anthrax, the drummer of Anthrax, uh, Gary Holt and Andreas Kisser as well. So it's a kind of a real, um, you know, I say super group really, but lots of different, um, every single song is a different super group and it's, uh, it's absolutely superb, really, really uh, clicked with me last week. So I've been playing that a lot. Um, Night Demon this is from 2015 this is their debut and these are fast becoming uh, well they are they are one of my favourite um, bands that are, uh, modern bands that are play, playing traditional heavy metal they're really carving out their, their own niche they're not particularly sounding like any one band in particular so this is Curse of the Dam from 2015 on SPV Records uh, it's a German um Label, uh, inside we have the uh, the lyrics and uh, the imagery from the, the front cover as well of the, uh, the, I guess the demon uh, with his axe. There are 12 songs on here. It's a, it's a nice long album, but as I say, they've really, Night Demon have really carved out their own um, niche in the, uh, the, the the traditional heavy metal market. They've, Night Demon songs sound like Night Demon and not particularly anybody else. They've got a, 
a great knack of coming up with some really catchy uh, riffs and, and hooks in songs. And for a three piece, they just um, the sound is really rich. They don't you know they, they don't seem to lack in any department. And uh, I've seen them live a couple of times now. And um, the uh, the singer. Uh, Jarvis Leatherby, uh, really nice chap. He was, he was, he's the guy that comes out and has a drink with the uh, the fans after a while. I think all the others are packing the, the gear away, so he's, he's he knows what he's doing. Um, this is the inner sleeve. Apparently, this is the official uh, soundtrack to the non-motion picture graphic novel Blood Sacrifice. So, I don't know if that is, actually is a uh, just a, a, a inner sleeve speak or whether that is a, uh, a true a graphic novel but I'd like to find out. I also believe Jarvis Leatherby is the guy behind keeping Sirith Ungle uh, running uh, as well now so um, coming back to Edinburgh so I'm going to see them again with Seven Sisters supporting them another one of my favourite uh, traditional heavy metal bands from the, the UK so that's going to be a killer show coming to Edinburgh so um, really looking forward to uh, uh, catching up with them again. Um, Let's say on SPV, there's your label, your label geeks. Um, but yeah, brilliant band, really check them out. Um, I, I need to get hold of their, their live album uh, again. Um, can't believe it took me so long to get that album on uh, on, on vinyl, but um, there you go, I had to wait for it to come down to a good price. Oh, and also as well, I love it too, uh, it came with a CD as well. Brilliant, brilliant. When, uh, when bands produce vinyl and they chuck in a CD as well. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Next up, um, this is a Swiss band. And uh, one of those bands I would have bought for the cover alone. This is a Bloody Six with their album In the Name of Blood, uh, 1985. And it's on one of my favourite uh, 80s labels, Mausoleum. You can't really go wrong with Mausoleum. Uh, I've said this so many times. I should probably um, just film that and keep recording the same, uh, playing back the same clip. But Mausoleum were well, one of those labels that picked up kind of all the 80s B-list bands at the time. All the bands that were maybe a little bit late to the party, not as good, um, you know, a couple of years behind maybe the, the modern sound. I mean, this is 1985, Thrash was just really starting to kick off. Um, but these sound like an early 80s heavy metal band. Um, they weren't really... They, <laughs> These guys weren't good enough really to make the grade and I can see why they were just a one and a done um, band but you know 30 years later these things are real gems. I absolutely love uh, finding this stuff because it doesn't matter that this was 1985 and it was dated because this is 2020 and it, it just all sounds good to me now. There's your pictures of the band. They're actually a six piece so whereas Iron Maiden didn't uh, have a, a three a guitar attack lead until what 19 uh 1990 or a bit later than that or no 2000 actually uh these guys were doing it in, in 85 although you probably wouldn't know from listening to it that there were three guitars on there it's pretty kind of thin um uh, production um what does it sound like so different tracks sound like different bands but if you're into bands like if you the Dio, uh, definitely some big influences on here. There's not often that you, you know, people normally um, compare bands to the likes of Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, or whatever. But there's Dio in here. There's Accept. There's Anvil. Um, it's a real kind of hodgepodge. I love that word. Uh, Star Chaser is a good uh, opener. Uh, high class and wild is like uh, Dio meets Restless and Wild era. Accept. Um, killer song. Um, Cold Wind Blows uh, doesn't half plot on though. It's uh, a real a bit of the clunker on the album. It's pretty depressing. Um, but like I say, it was a bit dated by 1985. Um, the End of the World, last track on the album, is probably the standout uh, song on the album and well worth a listen. There's that Mausoleum label. I, If I see something on Mausoleum and I don't know what it is, I'll grab it. Uh, really disappointed uh, even though that's not a great album by any means it's a great example of uh, 80s heavy metal something maybe you're not expected to see but uh, Queen's Greatest Hits um, this is really all I need from Queen I do have some other Queen albums on uh, CD 
but this takes me right back to my childhood. My sister had this uh, very album and um, know every song on here by heart. Uh, and um, I, I just love it. It's one I need a queen fix. <coughs> I will stick this on. Uh, took me a while to find a decently priced copy that wasn't uh, beat to crap, but uh, I finally did. Um, this has been sitting in the inbox waiting for me to get into that uh, queen mode for probably over a year now, but uh, uh, it happened in the last week. And um, go, yeah, even the kids know. I mean, my kids aren't into music at all, but even they know songs on here, uh, especially things like, you know, Don't Stop Me Now. But uh, great album. I don't know. Self explanatory. Don't need to go into any details. Another album, I don't really need to go into any details, but this is truly a grail. I've been looking for this for a long, long time. And to finally grab it, um, and grab it on eBay as well, and it to be in as good a condition as was described on eBay, um, uh, I had to pull the trigger. So this is Exodus Bonded by Blood. I have had to make do with a CD copy of this for a few years now. And um, I wasn't going to get the reissue, you know me in my 80s, uh, I want to get, I knew I would get a uh, an OG and uh, it's not mid condition by any means, but it's a, uh, a, a very good VG plus uh, condition, but it's Music for Nations number 44, there we go. Great stuff. This is actually one of the most expensive second-hand records I've ever bought. And this kind of just shows how I uh, stick out for a bargain. I'll tell you, it cost me £24, which uh, isn't as much as... I mean, some people buy records for you know hundreds of pounds or what have you. I'm, I'm never going to do that. But uh, for me to find uh, it at, uh, at that price and to win the auction on it, um, I was... Well chuffed. Penultimate album from uh, so we've had some Queen, some Thrash with Exodus. Uh, this is a little different. So this is Goat, as you like. It's a, a mini album from 1990, UK pressing on Beggar's Banquet. Now, uh, who a Goat? You may well be asking yourself, or you may well be, you may well know already. Um, I don't know. Tell me in the comments. I. Uh, I don't know where I heard of Goat. I'm sure I must have heard of them through the VC. Um, all I know about them is they've been described as sounding like the cult. And I've been on a bit of a cult kick in the last year and picked up a few cult albums. Um, they, they were blind by it. I say they. I, I got this, the mini album, and they had one other full length album, which I also picked up at the same time. I got them off Discogs. And they were effectively add-on purchases. I was buying something from a seller and um, I could pick up two more albums for the same postage. It wasn't going to cost me any more postage. Couldn't find anything else. Saw these goat albums, thought, well, I'll just grab them. They, they, they were in great nick. They were all, they were basically near mint, but, you know, only a couple of quid each. This is the inner sleeve. This one has six, six songs on it. Um, so, we're, oh, I'm, uh, I'm getting sidetracked. But, uh, so it's Beggar's Banquet label there, same both sides. So who are Goat? Goat are, let's say, they sound like the cult. That's probably the best comparison I can do. They're kind of a little bit hard rock. They're a little bit sleaze rock, although now I've said it out loud, I'm, I'm not so sure about that. But also, you know, it's that alternative rock sound of the cult. Very catchy, very upbeat. Um, it was definitely worth a gamble. I've not listened to the full length album yet. I really wanted to absorb that one first. And as I say, catchy upbeat um it's it's good i really really enjoy it okay the last one of the seven um gonna end on a high definitely so this is a saxon and a rock and roll gypsies this isn't an album i was uh aware of for a, a long long time so i was surprised when i saw it that it uh, does appear to be uh, an official release it's on road runner records and it's a uh, it's a live album it's a live album from 19 uh, 89 um, so most of the tracks are mid 80s and beyond there's 10 tracks on there and six of them are from um, 
uh, innocence is no excuse and uh, and beyond. Yeah, so we've got three tracks from Rock of the Nations, two tracks from Innocence is No Excuse, uh, two from Power and the Glory, and then one from Destiny, Denim and Leather and Strong Arm of the Law. So, you know, there's only Dallas 1pm and, and the band plays on from the sort of classic early 80s era. But you can see the track list in there. And these are some of the tracks that I've not really heard live before. Um, Mid-80s to late 80 saxon is not my favorite period i think some of the some of it sounds a little bit too much like they were trying to be deaf leopard the um they went for more of that commercial sound to try and break uh america and uh it just wasn't my cup of tea i know a lot of people do like those those albums uh, a lot though and i've got them and i listen to them but hearing them live without the polish production and the uh kind of the keyboard uh, sound with it was um um yeah it was really really good and i think they sound so much better in their live uh format um this was the first album that was saxon album that was produced by bill uh bill biff byford and also the first saxon album to feature uh nibs carter on uh bass we still have uh graham oliver on guitar as well before doug scarrett came in um and we have the uh just the classic uh road runner label that a really good um addition to the saxon collection that one well there we have it that's uh, another seven albums um let me know what you think of these in the comments as always love chat with you guys in there that's why i do this um thanks for watching and i'll catch you again soon bosh